Hey everyone, it's FaceTime Police here. We wanted to quickly tell a story about how us, an unsigned artist, got to collaborate with the band on one of the biggest metal record labels around, Napalm Records. So you may be wondering how this all happened. Uh, so there's this band, Lord of the Lost. They're on Napalm Records. And um, they had this uh, contest that they held on Facebook. They had this song experiment in which they would give um, the same instrumental track to different artists and have each artist record their own uh, lyrics, vocals to that song. Which is cool, and that's not something a lot of artists do. Really, I haven't, I can't think of any other artist who's done that. It was definitely different. Um, we're used to obviously writing all of our songs from scratch, coming up with every layer of instrument. So to have all the, pretty much the instrumental handed to us was a, was a new experience. Yeah, and to get a song you know, on that level of professionalism, it was just, it was a dream come true to put our own vocals to that. So just a little backstory about how I found out about Lord of the Lost. So uh, YouTube recommendations, they're very hit or miss for me, at least. One day, they just pop up in my recommendations, Lord of the Lost, this like live, full live performance from this uh, concert called Mera Luna. And um, immediately, like their look caught me because they were kind of theatrical and they almost looked like a black metal band from what I saw. They had sort of like corpse paint. But then the music started and it just, it hooked me. The heavy guitars, there was keyboard. And then when Chris, the vocalist, started singing, it wasn't what I expected. Uh, like I said, they had corpse paint and whatnot. So I expected, you know, the, the, the black metal uh, vocals. But no, he, he had this like almost baritone, uh, very low kind of singing voice and it, it just intrigued me. And then from then on, I just looked up the videos and I became an instant fan when I heard like Lorelei and Morgana and all those other songs and videos. From then on, I was a fan. So we can fast forward to the contest again. <laughs> So they were asking for, obviously, links to your current uh, songs and music. And we submitted a couple of our songs, uh, waited a few months, and lo and behold, uh, the morning came where I got that email. I am so nervous to open it. I, I literally just left it in my inbox for a couple of hours <laughs> because I, I didn't want to get rejected from this contest. Uh, I really wanted to win this. But then I finally opened it and yeah, we, we, we were accepted. I couldn't believe it. I kept rereading it and yeah, we were one of the artists accepted for this contest. How long did we have to write it? We didn't have much time, right? Um, we were given a week to write and record our parts, which is pretty crazy for us because we like to take our time with our music. Although we have recorded songs in a week before. We've written and recorded songs <laughs> in a week before. It was like in a contest situation. We love contests. <laughs> um, as soon as I hit play on the um, instrumental track, I couldn't believe it because it, it was just perfect for us. We're kind of all over the place musically. We'll have some poppy songs, some heavy songs. Poppy songs, not to be confused with artist poppy. poppy. Pop, pop-like songs. <laughs> pop influence songs? Sure. <laughs> yeah, this song had everything. So as soon as I heard it, I just kind of asked myself, what do I hear, what do I see when I hear this music? And um, I've always had this song idea in my back pocket for Crimson Mask. Because uh, uh, we're huge wrestling fans, and um, if you don't know, Crimson Mask is a term that describes when a wrestler has... Uh, when they're covered in blood. ...blood all over their face. Just the way it's been described from countless wrestlers, it's like it gives them a rush, and it's like they're going into war. That second wind, that that gear to like kick it up a notch. You mentioned the fiend, right? Or it's like the fiend, demon Balor. Putting on a mask is putting on a new identity. In a way, it's becoming who you're meant to be or what you really are. There are things uh, relating to Finn Balor and uh, the fiend. You know, putting on that that persona. Um, for us, you know, before we perform, we put on face paint and a mask. So just that mentality of there's a big battle up ahead, there's a big hill to climb. You're gearing up for something big. So you're, yeah, you're putting on your war paint. So then we recorded the song, we recorded our parts for the song within a week, sent it over to their mixer, Benny, who we'll get to a little bit later. 
And when we heard the final mix master version back, we were blown away. One, I was a little surprised because it was different than the instrumental that we recorded to. I didn't know that was going to happen. Well, I knew that. So, yeah, uh, I forgot to mention to my brother that the version that we recorded our vocals to was a rough early version. Which and, I didn't know. And, of course, they would, uh, you know, re-record or, you know... They would put our vocals onto the actual instrumental. Yeah, the instrumental that would eventually become their song, Viva Vendetta. Right, so when I heard this final mix, I was like, what song is this? That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not that surprising, but it was like, it's like it was cooler than the rough edit that we recorded to, uh, which was a nice surprise for me. Because yeah, it's like the song got even bigger. We couldn't be happier with how that turned out. Yeah, and in fact, we were so happy with how it turned out, we're like, we should make a video for this. Yeah, and uh, obviously it's not our song, so uh, we knew that we couldn't make a an official video for it and whatnot, but um, we did uh, create a lyric video for it. Our first lyric video. Yeah, it's our first lyric video. So our first lyric video for our first collaboration song. So, just, two firsts. It just fit. So, the video was... 100% you're doing. Do you want to talk about what went into that, the visuals, how you came up with it? Yeah, um, like we said, it's our first lyric video. I didn't really know how much I wanted to put into it, whether it was just going to be one image and text appearing and disappearing. I felt that the song needed more. It was yeah. a special occasion. It's our first collaboration. And the song is just huge. It sounds huge. Yeah, it needs something. You don't want to just see one image with words over it. It doesn't do it justice. So, um, I just started filming stuff. <laughs> and that's the best way to do it sometimes, just film cool stuff. Yeah, so I just uh, laid out the masks in different configurations. Uh, that's all you need? <laughs> it's literally this. All right, so simple enough. Put our masks, cool lighting, iPhone. Sounds pretty simple. But you ran into some issues with this video, right? This video was cursed. Cursed. So um, I had a bunch of uh, presets. So the way the presets work is uh, you would click on the preset and drag it to the piece of footage that you want uh, affected. And for some reason, some of these effects didn't work as they were supposed to. So I'm not kidding when I say that uh, those scenes in which the uh, Lord of the Lost image pops up kind of creepily, that was not intentional. But it came out cool, so I kept it in the video. It was just kind of creepy because there's nothing in the preset that tells that clip to take another image from another <laughs> clip. The footage that I was applying the preset to was just... The wind picked up. Oh, as we're talking about That's a cursed creepy. video. What the hell? So a gust of wind just hit uh, the window and shook it. Maybe that's the same spirit that edited the video for you. <laughs> so I don't know why, but it took this image from Lord of the Lost and kind of intercut it with our masks. And it's near the intro. Uh, it, it, I kept it in because it looked really cool, but honestly it kind of freaked me out because I did not mean for that to happen. But didn't you have like exporting issues also with this video? Yes! Oh my goodness! And there were problems rendering, there were problems exporting. I had to do so much hacking and slashing to this thing just for it to actually export. But it exported and it turned out great. I loved it. It's one of our best videos, period. It's one of our coolest looking videos. So yeah, uh, we loved how Crimson Mass turned out. Uh, so much so that you had the idea of like, hey, this Benny guy, he did a great job mixing us into this Lord of the Lost song. He should mix our songs. And when the time came to record Right Place, Wrong Timeline, we sent it to Benny, and he had mixed and mastered the whole thing. And just like with this experience with uh, Crimson Mask, we were just blown away by how Right Place, Wrong Timeline turned out. With Benny's touch, it just made it a much bigger song. Um, it just it hits harder, um, especially that change when it goes from like the happy acoustic to, to the, like the in your face the metal metal part um if you haven't heard right place wrong timeline is there a way to link the video on here probably can they click somewhere uh or search for it on spotify it's also there maybe it's in the description <laughs> or suggest a video i don't know which way to point it's somewhere next to this screen 
So yeah, it was quite a journey to arrive to this song, but, and video, song and video. But we got there and you can watch the lyric video right here on YouTube. You can listen to the song. I listen to it on Spotify, but any music streaming site, you can listen to it. Oh yeah, and when you go to search for it, mask is spelled M-A-S-Q-U-E, not M-A-S-K. So Crimson Mask. Because I just wanted it to stand out. So yeah, the proverbial Crimson Mask. With a Q-U-E. Mask. It looks fancy. <laughs>